So this is a call to discuss composting in the spirit of weaving the world on Friday, December 17th, 2020. <clears throat> Brilliant. Um, and Bentley, you're having still having trouble finding your video? Yeah. Ah. There's the OBS. Ah, there's, there's the virtual cam. Yeah, yeah, but you can't find your way back to your natural physical cam? Uh, oh, uh, oh, you did it. I hate my, my built-in camera, so I'll just fix it. Oh. You did it. You're here. Okay. Hey, Wendy. Long time no speak. Hey. That was like a princess wave you got Totally. Going. This, is, this is the royalty wave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Uh, and then this is the don't talk to the pinky wave. I mean, don't don't talk to the pinky because the hand don't don't want to talk to you anymore. Um, <clears throat> so that one needs uh, practice. Yeah, I know. It's, it's I, I just I don't have it. Um, it's sort of like my British accent, which uh, you also don't have, right? Precisely, right. precisely, exactly. Although I tend to enunciate words, and I've had people ask me if I was British before, and I'm like, is that just because I'm completing the words? I don't know. So here's our conundrum. Um, we have, we're beginning to have some episodes called Weaving the World, which I need to finish transcribing and assembling and posting. But, but we have a series of, of interviews which will go in some direction. Um, and the conceit of Weaving the World is that we have follow-on calls or shadow calls, or right now I'm liking calling them composting calls, where we go back over the material. And, and hopefully it's people who are already on the call, but maybe also others who are interested in the topic when we watch the, watch the, the episode beforehand, where we sit down and enrich the conversation, uh, map about it, share the maps, connect the maps, do other kinds of things. It's, a, it's an act of collective uh, intelligence of some sort, or at least of collective sense-making. How about that? <clears throat> and at this moment, uh, we have very different tools on deck that don't talk to each other. So I'm a brain addict. Uh, uh, Gene is a Kumu black belt and now a heavy, heavy, heavy Rome user. And I don't know what other tools you're in, but he's also re reinstalled and deleted the brain. Oh, I don't know, eight, 10 times in your life. Or more. <clears throat> or more, possibly more. Um, Wendy is freeform with scalpel and I don't know what else. Uh, Bentley is... is uh, uh, which tools do you prefer? I build my own. I don't... So, uh, so Bentley, why, Bentley why use a tool that someone own. else has spent a lot of time crafting with lots of people when you can just spend twice as much time building your own tool and get half as much done? Makes so much sense to me. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I mean, who can argue with that logic? Right. Not I. Um, so, so, so part of what I wanted to do here was not to compost the the call that I that I had broadcast, but rather to just slow things down for a second and talk about composting. And then if we do this right, to come up with a series of questions that composting should sort of address or answer, maybe even a process for the composting calls, like <clears throat> why don't we start with this, continue to this and end with this or something like that. I don't know, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out um, and, and totally open also to what do you mean composting? This sounds ridiculous. Like if, if that's your response to it, then I shouldn't go waste a whole lot of time writing new code to invent a new thing called composting. Uh, but I have this feeling that that slowing down conversations and then going back in and making them better will help. So, and I would like to, just to, to add something to what I said earlier, um, I'd like to invite the participants, including the guests who were on the original episodes into the composting call. So if Daryl Davis wanted to show up and think about what was said during his interview with me and then go deeper and see where that goes, that's extremely cool. And, and also it helps us kind of trace back where do particular statements come from? Like what, what, what is the evidence or the basis for, for thinking something, saying something? Uh, what might that turn into as policy or what would you do because of that? What is replicable? There's a whole bunch of really nice questions that you don't get to when you're just ripping on through a conversation, however interesting that might be. So I'm trying a little bit to slow down and pay more attention. I'm trying a little bit to combine our perspectives on the same conversation and then en enrich them. I'm trying a little bit to create a richer asset between us that can be in the commons that is the leave behind artifact uh, that describes what happened uh, and what, what that nugget of activity might mean in, in the broader world. Now I'll shut up, at least for 30 seconds. <laughs> Thoughts, anyone? 
I, I've been thinking about the composting call um, and some of the questions I think I saw someone ask, maybe it was even Wendy, um, about like, you know, are we supposed to watch the video beforehand? Are we, and I think that was Nancy. Gonna actually, without, right, you're right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what, what do we do during, during the actual call and afterwards? And a lot of people talk about, well, we want the stuff to, to not have to happen during the call. Um, so there's two ways I thought of it. One would be great just as a kind of a co-working room, you know, to where you're all sitting down and doing your own thing. And then someone might ask a question and pop up, but it could be a work session more than actual discussion. Um, it could be a place where people are, they just know they want to participate in something cool. Um, and so they might just come in without an idea or want to team up with someone else that's already doing something. Um, and it may be just a discussion, kind of like a book club, where you talk about what were some interesting parts of the interview that, that we think we should tease out. And maybe two or three people could choose to pick one segment and map that one segment in three or four different ways or something. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the purposes I think could come out of a, of a, a meeting. And then I guess one other is, um, you know, we talked about having a, a consolidation, I can't remember the actual C word we used, video at the end, but now I'm thinking maybe the, maybe the, the grouped it together or curated artifacts collection kind of like a, a kind of like a museum exhibit you know we're we're taking some of these things and piecing them together that may maybe that's more of an interactive piece than than just a video although i think it'd be good to have a video of it anyways afterwards so the, that composted call could even be after people have created some content and maybe it's talking about how that content gets woven together right so I just threw a whole <clears throat> bunch of ideas out without any directions. So. That's lovely. That's perfect. That's very composty. It's like there's a little couple snippets off the green onions, and then there's like a piece of uh, squash and squash peel and some seeds, and then like a little bit of the fat off the steak. So, <clears throat> so there we are. Um, um, riffing, riffing off of that, I, yes. I really think Vincent would be a good person to invite to talk about this because... Um, I think his platform is quickly moving there where it could be a good space for all the different pieces. Cause I wasn't even thinking you and I were talking a little before Jerry, but I wasn't thinking about the repository part of it also, right? So, which of course is essential. So it could be a good repository. And I know he knows how to embed Kumu maps. So it could be, we could use Kumu until we come up with something that we like better, right? To map and now that he's reorganized his database i think the i think the organization of that page for the repository the organization of um and then the resulting kumu map would be much more useful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also um the simplest thing for us to do is kind of to link to one another's maps and insights and to kind of build sort of in parallel different entities using whatever mix of tools we each prefer sort of moving toward the center of, of what the topic is um and I, I have no idea what this is going to look like in 10 years go ahead yeah and i guess i just to be, make sure i was being clear where he, his his site could hold all the different versions of the maps i don't think his site yet could be the final right, right. right? it would just be a, a holding space which is kind of why i said if we each point to each other then you can get to all the different artifacts kind of from from whatever path you find your way in and there is gotcha. no cano there is no canonical single reference version in the middle and then maybe we figure out how to separate the data from the tools and maybe we wind up um, creating or joining an effort to create open linked reliable contextualized data in which case that actually becomes the asset in the middle <clears throat> and we're all just kind of living on top of the asset enriching it <clears throat> um, adding to it linking it and using it all the time and then that that sort of becomes the, the artifact and it isn't the artifact then isn't held in anybody's tool there's no vertical here's the data in the database but rather the data sprinkled through ipfs or in some distributed store um, we now have a way to have different lenses or tools access and improve the data as we go and again we don't have that today but i would love to be there in five or ten years and that makes it easier to figure out 
where the center is or what the asset is or something like that. Because then the asset is this layer of, inf of information that conceptually I picture as a layer above things like Wikipedia, which is a layer itself of facts and pages about stuff. So right? what do you perceive as missing? Whole bunch of stuff. You're talking about where it could be in, in five or 10 years. Yeah, you mean what's, what's, what's why can't we do that now? <clears throat> um, well, partly the data is stuck in each tool. So Kumu can import some database files and other sorts of stuff, but it's it creates a Kumu file that that you know that I can't look at from the brain, for example, and you can't, I think you can't go inspect from GraphViz, or am I wrong about that? And same for the brain. The it depends a, upon whether or not you have access. Um, so, I well, mean, if, if you if you, you know you develop your brain yeah. on your desktop, but you publish it to the web, right? Right. So, and if you make it public on the web, anybody can link to any element in your brain, not just to the brain. They can actually link to individual elements. Okay. So my understanding is that the, even though I publish my brain openly right now, you've actually got to go in through an instance of the brain on the brain server to get to my data. Now we have exported my data into a large bag of JSON objects in uh, a NoSQL database, but nobody knows where that is. Nobody's been playing with it yet, well, right? Well, <clears throat> everything has to be somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you have to, whatever it is that's been created is sitting somewhere. Yes. You have to get to it, right? So you, you said you have to get to an instance of the brain through the brain server. Well, if it was in Google Drive, you'd have to get to it through an access to Google Drive. In other words, you have to, to provide read or read-write access to whatever it is that you choose to make public. Right, but part of it is access privileges to the file, <clears throat> which is which is doable in, at the file system layer. Part of it is, hey, this is actually an instance of proprietary software called the brain, and unless you're running an instance of that server, you don't get to see and visualize the data that's tucked right there. And I think that's harder somehow, right? Because there's no AP, at, at this point, I think there's no API where you can actually programmatically make a call into the data that's being kept in this brain format. So I might give you a file access, but you couldn't do very much with it at this point yet. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bentley also. Well, I'm, I'm not quite. I, I think what Jerry is getting at is kind of a long-term vision where you can where we kind of have the raw data and it can be pulled up in multiple systems at the same time with different visualizations with different ways of looking at it. I think that's a pretty large discussion on what it even means. And maybe we should get back to Palmquist. Okay, uh, well, including access privileges and stuff like that. And, and at the, rate, the reason I say that this is a further a vision far out that maybe in five or 10 years is that I think that that's complicated um, as you just said, but, but Gene, to address your question, uh, that's one of the things that I think would help us actually collaborate in this space, as opposed to every one of us who's interested in doing this is busy curating our own little snippet of the world, our own little tiny sort of view into the into the universe and, and trying to figure this out. Now, I'm very interested in what like Rome collaborators are doing in multi-user Rome spaces where they're all editing things or Athens or other kinds of tools that already within the tool permit collaborative editing and collaborative creation of that space. That's really interesting to me. Uh, but I'm looking for the step beyond also eventually, which is the collaboration across tools, uh, or at least the conversation across tools. It doesn't need to be, I can go in and edit your thing, but how do I, how do I link more intimately to the, to the cool stuff you've built? Does that make sense? So for instance, where you have, where, where, um, where you've got a food systems di Kumu diagram that's a really, really great systems diagram about how things work. Um, I would love to sort of have that somehow exist within the same space that I'm doing brain stuff in. But a systems diagram is a different thing than a, than a brain display, right? Right. Uh, and so, 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 so having one in the other, <clears throat> the construct isn't accommodated, okay? It depends on how you, yeah, it depends on how you're looking at it though, because 
well, and, and, and here I'm talking above my pay grade because I am not an information architect and I don't know exactly what, what's being done at these levels. Um, and as Bentley said, maybe we should get, get more closer to what composting actually is and means and how we, how we do it pragmatically. Because we're, we're in a bit of an abstract kind of like, what, where's the data and how does it live conversation? Yeah, so, so I think, go ahead. So the way, that, the way that they have continued to evolve the brain so that you can link to that map and have it show up as though it's a page in the brain in other words, the, you, you split the, the view and, and the content of the link shows up on the right-hand side or the bottom, wherever you put it. Right. It, it looks like it's actually in the brain, only it's actually somewhere else. So it's embedded actually in the notes page kind of because the notes will handle embedding. Is that sort of what you're saying? Right. <clears throat> yeah, because every thought in the brain has a notes <clears throat> page. And then the notes pages, they just rewrote all the software. So it's now pretty powerful. It now has Rome-like backlinks-ish, but it also has pretty powerful embedding. And one of the things that Mark Trexler did, I think, which kind of confused me, but I got the power, was he embedded my brain and his brain in the notes field. So you could sort of see my brain sitting there within his climate mm -hmm. web brain. And I'm like, I just went one recursive loop too many and that my brain broke. <laughs> um, but 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 I get that that's doable and interesting and possibly powerful as well. So you could in fact have a Rome graph embedded in the notes field, right? Yep. So we should play with that, and 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 I think that might be super interesting. Where uh, and and conversely, there could be links from the Rome database within Rome out to uh, the brain, which is also likewise embeddable in different places. May, I don't know how friendly it is to embedding, but I've, I've embedded it before. And, and so each of us in the maps that we're holding could say, oh, and by the way, over here is a shared cultivated garden of interesting stuff. And that, that's doable today with what the tools already do, which is good. Um, so partly I'm also trying to get back to what does it look like to deepen the conversation on a topic that happened and just riff on that for a bit. Um, and I can bring up some when, examples when, if you want, go ahead. When we have these group groups, okay, which is I think a good description of them, <clears throat> they tend to be divergent, all right? And, and you corral them back in from time to time, all right? And then they go back out again so that if you, if you compost it afterwards, which is fine, you could call it that if you want, you end up with a bunch of pieces throughout the discussion that are related to whatever the topic was that we were supposed to talk about. And then you got all these pieces off to the side, some of them loosely connected and some, some of them not connected at all. Um, but, you know, one thought leads to another thought leads to another thought and it just comes up so you could in fact map it you could map it in the brain you could map it in kumu you could put it in in rome you, i think you could put it in almost anything it, it's yes. it's a matter of preference though i don't from my perspective i'm not sure that there is a real best place to put it it depends on what you want it to look like yeah, yeah, exactly. And also what you're trying to get done at that moment and also a bunch of other things, right? Are you just trying to, are you just trying to build a, a big, beautiful resource list? In which case you might want to use Airtable or Bubble or something that, that's mm -hmm. really good at huge lists, right? Are you also, are you trying to do a systems diagram? And I, I, I can't fake a good systems diagram in the brain and you can do a beautiful one in Kumu. And so I think this, the suitability to purpose of the thing at hand really matters here as well. Um, so in the which sense is, of which is which is the part that had me confused in terms of into in the future all of I can't see all of the content being accessible from from one perspective because the construct of the content is different right yes and, um, and the idea that there are strands that go off in different directions, I'll just bring up my notes from my interview with Gerald Davis. So he talked about uh, uh, Math, Math, Matthias Cole, who was the head of the American Nazi party after George Lincoln Rockwell was assassinated. 
and how he ran in. He, he told an anecdote of, of how he ran into Cole and things that happened. So his sophomore high school year uh, in, in his class called Problems of the 20th Century, Cole was a guest speaker, right? That happened to Davis in his life. And, I, and that's, that's, you know, a, a, that's a segment in the video, which I'm not linking to here, which would be really fun to be able to link directly to that segment. So when you hit this nugget in my brain, you could play exactly that stretch of, of the video. Um, and, uh, and you can do that. And, and, and you could pretty easily do that. It would be just work, right? To go back and do a timestamp into the, into the YouTube video in this, in this sense. Uh, and then eight years later, Davis confronted Kale at a protest in Lafayette Park, all, all of which is in this sort of, this kind of episode uh, of this. But then, but then um, when you start going to the American Nazi party, you can go off in lots of different directions about the rise of neo-Nazism, about a whole bunch of other kinds of things. And I, I like that very much. So to me, composting is like inoculating something with mycelium. You want it to sort of break down the nutrients and then grow in whatever directions uh, and then weave into other root systems and then make the exchange. So, so I, I, I like the visual of this has lots of little threads that are dead ends or go in different directions. And it's not, it's not a neat package. I'm really comfortable with that. And this perspective on this conversation, this set of topics is in this one tool, and it's not going to easily connect to other perspectives, but there are other rich perspectives also that you can go hop to through embedding or just by following a link. And for now, that, that's fine. Unless that breaks yeah. someone else's brain. And? Yeah, so, so to mm. me, the thing that's missing in, in creating a good composting conversation from the way we've been talking about it so far is having kind of what you, what's the thing you want either, what, what point do you wanna reach at by the end, right? Where is this heading? Because if all it's doing is extending the conversation so that we get more connections in the brain for, as an example, right. okay, that's fun, but that's just more connections in the brain. I'm interested in, in getting a little bit closer to what's emerging, making some sense out of it, trying to get to some semblance of wisdom, even though we haven't, we haven't, we haven't uh, defined what that is either. To me, the composting is, is, is an interesting word in the sense that it's then providing nutrients for something to grow. So what is that thing that we want to grow? Because um, let's say you, it, it'll help guide the discussion. It doesn't mean the discussion has to be targeted at a specific thing, because I agree with you, letting it free flow is, is part of the joy of it, I think, for a lot, will be for a lot of people, letting it go where it needs to go. But having some guidelines, some boundaries by way of expressing kind of where you want it to end, or the question we're trying to answer, or something will be an important piece of this so that it doesn't just Wander. go anywhere yeah exactly so <laughs> so in that spirit um so for me what i'm what i think i'm trying to say is i'm interested in what i and anybody else who's joining for the composting think where are the tasty bits and so for me in my perspective how can you hate me when you don't even know me is a really <laughs> really tasty bit and connects up to bridging the cultural divide familiarity dispels fear great questions <clears throat> and and i'm interested in making this better like this is this is a lot of resources a lot of links i, I you know here's a uh, diffusing conspiracy theories here's uh people who left racist nationalist groups uh and it's a list of you know former you know former nazis and former uh, skinheads and stuff like that um so so i think one way of defining where we're trying to get to is to um a bad, bad metaphor maybe, but since I'm calling this composting, we're sort of trying to digest the call to better settle it into its greater context and to improve the important notes that are hit in that conversation. Does that make sense? And is that enough of a goal? And can we refine that? So you mentioned the rural community sustainable food system model that we developed. Right. <clears throat> I realize now, based upon all the things that you said, we composted that on the fly. So that every one of the meetings that we had, there was six or eight people in the meeting. <clears throat> every time someone brought up a comment, the question was, where's it go on the map? Yep. 
What's it connect to? What's the relationship? So that you didn't have to go back over the conversation later to figure out what the structure of the relationships were because you built them on the fly. And, and we run around and made sure everybody got a chance for their inputs, right? And some people would say, well, you know, I think this is relevant, but I don't know where it goes yet. So it would go on the map, but it's not yet connected, okay? And, and afterwards, in other words, all of those pieces were connected at the time that they were surfaced, but we went through it afterwards and distilled it into more refined views of what we initially developed. Yes. Um, yes. And, and because you had a sort of a project to build this map in the food system and because you had some participants who were trying to leave the conversation with a map they understood that would be helpful as a systems diagram that they could then use for further for projects, um, every time you got together to talk, you were busy making the map better, asking important questions, uh, things like that. So you're totally right. Your process with that feels like composting in that sense. But you had, you had a narrower, more focused goal, uh, an end product, because you're looking for a map of the food system that would be useful you know, to, that, to, that, to that community. Where here, it's like, we're trying to improve general knowledge and figure out where the, how to solve the big puzzles. It's pretty... So so even with that particular topic, you yeah. could build a map on the fly. By on the fly, what do you mean? As people offer comments or perspectives, you put them on the map and you and have so that... people look at them and ask them about, okay, is there someplace else on the map that this ought to connect to? Uh, yes. And so that that's a piece of the interesting thing is that most mappers are starting with a fresh sheet of paper and creating a new scaffold diagram or a new MindJet page or whatever else. And then when the page gets crowded, they're out of room. Um, when Pete Kravd, when he sort of post-processed the uh, metaverse call we had, he spent a lot of time and energy creating new pages for basically the nouns that we mentioned, the people. And, and in fact, those people have representations somewhere out. He, he could have linked to the, the person's profile on LinkedIn, but he didn't do that. He created a page in the wiki space for them. And one of the things that, that is groovy about doing this ongoing with evolved infrastructures or evolved substrates of content is that you're connecting to known entities all the time. And you're, you're sort of always weaving, you're weaving to stuff that exists instead of instantiating things either again which means, oh my gosh, how often are we going to have to write this name or do this thing or doing them fresh, you know, fresh the first time. So I think that's a subtle and really important and interesting part of this process is that when there's a shared ongoing memory and when you connect up to some other thing that just got mentioned, it's rich already, mm -hmm. that's cool. And, and, and you're kind of building this bridge between domains of interest, uh, 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 solution sets, whatever it might be. I don't know. And I, and I have a feeling that that web of connections is really important. So the reason I like weaving the world <clears throat> is that that feels the weaving feels like the warp and the weft of these little links between things that matter. Um, okay. Anyone else thoughts? Um, I was thinking of a slightly different purpose. Um, cool. The show is, the title is Weaving the World. And so rather than taking the presentation and it sounds like, I mean, it is kind of finding the nuggets in there, but it's associating them with other stuff out there. So I kind of see this as a time for people to come in, see what maps and links that other people have made and link to their links. And then we're kind of bringing everything together and building that mycelium network. Um, I think that, that would be a good use of time. And then making sure we're, like you were saying, cross-linking between all the things and then building out a few hubs like the OGM website and, um, uh, and Vincent's site and a couple of things where we put a majority of the links. Um, and maybe throw everything in IPFS or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that time is like, well, here's here's what I got, or here's some links and stuff like that. And how can we link these things up? How can we cross post? And kind of a coordination. Um, yeah. And the thing, uh, so one model, um, we had a mapping hoedown early in the history of OGM, but we only I only posted it one day, one time. And we picked a topic and then we had different people come in with different tools. And then uh, we talked about the topic just for, I think, 20 minutes. And then we said, okay, every, let's go around the room and, and screen share what we did with that, with our tool. Um, I think Robert Best was there with Mind Manager and uh, someone was doing uh, uh, Miro and so on and so forth. And it, it, it was quite interesting. And we just did it once. We should have kind of maybe repeated that because that could sort of easily turn into this kind of rhythm of, of composting. Um, Yeah, Wendy, and it's it partly. Um, so one of the things I find from my use of the brain over time is that I get better at summary questions. I get better at synthesizing. I start to see connections that I didn't see before, and 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 that it just it just sort of gets richer and more interesting in different ways. And I realize, oh damn, I should just create a collective thought for these great questions, right? Um, and so then I can go in and, and, and find a find a way out from from those places, and that that feels to me like a move toward wisdom from just a big bucket of knowledge. And, yeah, and, and I, I would that's what I would love to see if yeah. we can get to in the composting, right? Yeah, it's it's more than just adding in the connections we all made, right? right. It's the, what do those connections start to tell us? Right. And and this is going to be a, a, a goofy example, but just it, it occurs to me as as a an inspiration for me, where some years ago I met a guy who who cared a lot about history and and Asia and all that, and I was like, oh yeah yeah yeah, and and you know the the Mongols basically the the Chinese build the the Great Wall in some sense to to prevent the Mongols from coming in and invading so often, um, and the Mongols bounce off the wall and go to Europe, and all of a sudden Europe's getting invaded because hey. Uh, you know, uh, the Mongols love plains that they can feed their horses off of. And up until they hit mountains in Europe, they're doing great. Um, and then and then my conversational partner says, yes, but and then this. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. And there was the, there was this like layering of history that was beautiful that I wasn't. We were just standing in a lobby <clears throat> and he and I haven't talked since. And I was just sitting thinking, how do we compare notes on things like that and then say, oh, and I got this piece of, of insight from this book over here, you know, the, the secret history of Genghis Khan or whatever, uh, and this piece from over there, that kind of weaving together of, of how things work is to me a new way of telling history and of, of making your way through history. And if along that journey, you're like, oh, and to, to, to understand this point, go watch this segment of this TEDx talk, that's brilliant. Like right. That's okay. Just fabulous. So, but what is it about that? Right. Because so far, even in your example, you're yeah. talking about different pieces of data. Right. Yes. And the only way I know it brought meaning to you was the way that you're talking about it. So what is it? I'm not talking about the fact in and of itself that you learned about history, but but it's the change in your perspective or it was the change in your understanding. Right. Or it was a piece of information that 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 maybe conflicted with something that you knew before that that shift. It's the shift in perspective, understanding. Right. That's what we're trying to go for. Not that we're trying to necessarily compost with that intention in mind. But if we can recreate a little bit of the environment that encourages those. Those openings right? That is the great stuff, right? So to me, the, the, the creating the repository, making the connections is only the first step, right? Yeah. And in that, right. And there are technical hurdles to that. And, and those are important conversations and there are uh, ways that we can view it. And those are important conversations and there are ways to include people so we can get more connections. And those are important conversations. But to me, they're all the foundation for a much richer conversation, which is, okay, what does this mean? What is this telling us? Is this bringing us forward at all in either our individual or collective understanding of what we're trying to do here? Right. You know, um, and if the better verse is the goal, we don't even know what that means yet. Can we conclude at the end of every call that what, do, what was our takeaway and how this 
how did this take take us even just the tiniest step toward a better verse right, right. if that's right. our if that's kind of our our umbrella right so even if we were if we were to use that as a compass um, then we could we could mine the conversation by the end of the conversation saying okay all right we had a fun conversation we let it go everywhere here's a nugget here's a nugget here's a nugget right and we don't even have to do anything with it but just acknowledging these were the little steps this is how we expanded things a bit i love that um those connections are often narrative paths they're often storytelling in within the map for me i'm just talking about my own experience and use but some some nodes and some thoughts in my brain are just nouns they're here's an association here's a person here's a song others are hey and i just looked and i i, I never put the mongols bounced off the great wall in my brain because i was going to go show you that but i didn't i never actually added that narrative but there's a bunch of them that are, are sort of storytelling or opinion on purpose and the opinions connect into larger stories and larger narratives and stuff like that and uh, on the one hand i think that's interesting and useful and often opaque to, to newcomers coming in because they don't know which path to take or where to go and then the second thing I think you said, which I think is hugely important, is if this can become a rich venue for, for conversations where people are like, got it, and, and they, they, they can see things differently, understand things, and then contribute back to the growing of the shared asset, that's fabulous, right? So, so how do we, and, and one thing might be, hey, if, you, if, if you're really interested in this topic over here in this little nexus, there's a thriving conversation over on Reddit, on this subreddit about it. Uh, or uh, there's a discord server that that in this period go look at these dates to these dates they had this super rich conversation about is ai conscious or not conscious right and and those kinds of things would be really interesting additions to the the shared map because then you can actually find your way into the conversations you're muted yes thank you so you right you added something for me which is a good reminder of not only would a composting call or anyone who watches it right, be an avenue to bring a community together to talk about these things and further our way towards the metaverse, but it would also feed individuals' connections to other organizations or deeper learnings or things away from weaving the world that we may never, ever know about Bingo. because of the repository and the way we're, we're presenting it. And if we do this right, we, we're sending people off to great conversations about everything that are being hosted yes. by other people in other places entirely. Yes. And in that way, I get, you know, giving them, um, supporting them and finding the things that serve them best and that, and, and enabling them to serve the world better too, as a result. Yeah. Making exactly. it all faster. Yeah. So, you know, just by tomorrow, we should have this. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> I mean, what's funny sort of a little bit from what Jean was, was saying a little earlier is that I think some of these, these tools are capable of a whole bunch of this right now. Some of it, some of it takes legwork. You know, like like embedding one of our displays in another display is a manual act, and we have to go figure out where and how to tell people about it and how to make it make sense. Um, going and finding a, a segment. So YouTube has long had t equals number of seconds in offset. You can make a link like that super easily, but they just added a feature. I'm not sure it's universal yet called clips, which is I think it's the same feature with an endpoint. So you can send somebody a call out into a video and, and, and they, they're watching a segment, not just a start point. That's really interesting. And I, I need to go find out more about whether, because I think they're rolling it out just a few users as a test. Uh, but that, that, that's nicer than just a, a pointer into an offset. And, and then manually, you have to say, oh, okay, for this segment, I got that idea from this point. And then one of the ideas that came up um, during one of the recent calls um, around this topic was wouldn't it be cool if while you were in the middle of a conversation, let's say one of the Thursday check-in calls, when there was a really interesting thread that happened, you would hit like a red button, a little bookmark, a little happy icon or whatever. Oh and then, yeah, I was bringing that up. Yeah. And then AI could look back on the transcript and say, oh, at this point, like six people in the call did the shaky hand gesture or raised flags. Let's go find, let's go find how long that clip is on this topic sort of some real content analysis that, that goes back into the transcript and says, oh, it seems to have started over here, and then automatically create a bookmark to that spot and make that easy to put in other places, easy to refer to, et cetera. That would be very cool. Very cool. And that's kind of wish list. And Bentley, um, you're, I'm, I wanna know more about how you're envisioning 
the video just the video player thing that you're that you're prototyping and thinking about um, what I just described is like four steps beyond what you're thinking about entirely, but not unrelated at all. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, so um, how might that work? Yes. Yeah, so by, you know, I, I, I know that we have this interview and then people are building um, maps and other mostly visual displays, um, sometimes text. Uh, why wouldn't he? Um, so what I wanted to do was, I was thinking about how can we combine all these into a video later on, and then just with some other stuff working on, the question is, you know, I thought, well, wouldn't it be neat if anyone could come in and add their, uh, their maps to the correct part of the video where they would like it to display? Um, and I realized I could do that all in JavaScript. Um, and this also is very similar, Jerry, to your, you know, you, you hate that. Is it Prezi that went away or I they know. changed, right? Yes, yeah, Prezi. It's so Prezi. They this lobotomized won't follow themselves. The, yeah, it won't follow the Prezi format, but it, I'm really starting to think it's more than a video thing. It's more like a presentation thing. Yeah. So anyways, you could, you could have, you know, you and the interviewee talking and then up would come up, um, you know, someone's Kumu map. And if it's a video later on, then it would just be a picture of it and maybe they could be navigating around. But um, also if could, they're viewing the this on a website, embedded. that could be an that could right, that could be an embed, right? And they could pause the video and play with the map and then then hit play in the computer go and then that would and then there might be a, a third thing that pops up. And then also I was thinking there's a lot of times where during your interview and I I'm sorry I forgot his name, but the NFT a guy you're talking to Jesse Engel. Yeah. So Jesse was using a lot of terminology that a lot of people may not be familiar with. And I was thinking, oh, I just reinvented pop up video, right? Yeah. With the little yeah. things popping up, but they would also be have links in them. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Think... So then making an editor later on to where anyone could go and take the all the different content that we have and create playlists. A playlist may be in the wrong term, but it's like a dynamic you know a dynamic single video yeah um of interrelated stuff where things pop in and pop out at different timing it's like oh, an it it's like, like an en it's like an enriched path through the video and related stuff um and it and it looks a little bit like fedwiki i mean you know how in fedwiki you you keep getting these vertical panels that sort of show up as you go deeper through the wiki that's that's a one kind of limited way of thinking about it but the vertical panels are often explaining what just happened. You know, you're basically mm -hmm. going deeper through the same topic. So here, uh, a, a, a panel could be a static page or an embedded object or a Kumu map, and or it could be a video or something else. Somebody's really angry at somebody else outside. That was a very long honk. Wow. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah. So in in the in the visualization, so the the example I had did happen to use kind of like three columns. Um, but I was also thinking on a on a mobile device. It would it would probably be kind of three rows and yeah. What's interesting about that is that you could scroll up and choose to focus on different things while the video is playing, um, and interact with things while they're going on. Um, so yeah, that that's that's the idea. But have it to where people, you know, later on, have it to where people could come in, create their own um, kind of presentation with all the content. Um, yes or add their stuff to, you know, request their piece, say, hey, you know, at five minutes into the conversation, um, that there'd be a form that they could go out and put in, you know, here's a video, here's a, here's a link to my Kumu map on what they talked about there. Right. Uh, it's funny, when I realized that, that Prezi is, had become a dead end, I did, I googled, of course, open source Prezi, and I found a couple different things, and I found one thing that looked really promising, until I realized all it was in some other place, you author stuff and you feed it a list of what you want to show on screen. And all it does is scroll around and do the effect of following the path. It doesn't let you off of the path. It did nothing else whatsoever. And I was like, ah, oh, man, that's just really like weak beer. Um, and, and Miro and the brain don't let you tell a story the way Prezi does, but they ain't that far from it. And one of the features I wanted Harlan to add to the brain was paths. Give me playlists. Let me specify, hey, 
he, you know, click here and it'll take you through a particular path through the brain and maybe even do what Prezi was doing at the end, which is you could, you could attach an audio clip to each node so that it plays a story as you go through. With Miro, you can do frames, but it's really clumsy to go from frame to frame and there's no way to say, play me, you know, connect these frames automatically when I hit next. That, that, that doesn't happen. That could Although be a that's feature. a pretty easy plugin to build. Uh, yeah, that would be an easy and 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 at least Miro has a plugin architecture, and we know you know we know a black belt Miro user for three. Um, so so you could maybe hack hack Miro to do what Prezi was doing. That'd be really interesting. Some right? of it, yeah, and some of it, and, and a lot of these tools can import and export sort of to each other, right? Because you can import some aspects of of call metadata into Miro and map it out programmatically, and you can import some of that data over into Kumu and see how it interacts and you know stuff like that. Now, uh, Jerry, to your idea of um, the the path through, so the back end is all set up for that, the data, the database and the API um, from what Mark Antoine's done. And I talked about, let's just recreate what you, how you use um, uh, the brain uh, just as a simple UI, leaving out the pieces you don't use. But now maybe the first kind of use case is to create that path tool where you could just put in timings and select links and it would walk you through it. Yeah. And then later the audio files. Um, that, That's interesting. that wouldn't be that hard to do. So I don't know if you want to put that on your list of wish list. Um, we should sit down and refine what that is because I, I have a vague idea of what, your viewer demo did but i'm not sure because like oh this would be this would be a separate thing. A separate thing entirely yeah but i was thinking that i when you bring up the brain in the video in it so in my kind of video weaver thing i was going to bring up the brain but the brain is designed for a big screen um so really what i decided is i'd almost like and the other day i pulled it up on my phone and i'm like i would like to explore the brain on my phone so also making a phone interface for the brain, I think, would be helpful, and I haven't quite thought of how to do that right. yet. Um, but you know, even if it just like listed here are the, I don't know even what you call it, but here's the up. Here's a here's the first five ups, you know, right. and you can click more. Here's the first five downs, and here's the first five sideways. Yeah, um, in three different panes, rows, yeah, panels. Yeah, that, that and, I, and, and I, th down. I think I told you that. Um, Kenneth Tyler and I long ago used his seed wiki to experiment on uh, PowerPoint, blog, and brain. And he just used frames. So that there was a frame, there was a top frame across the whole mm -hmm. screen that was parent thoughts. There was a middle frame that was the active thought. There was a side panel for sibling thoughts. And there was a lower pane for child thoughts. And they were all listed there. Like it was just a call into each, each direction. Yeah. And it, it worked remark, it was ugly as sin, but it worked remarkably well. Yeah, I guess. For mobile, having a scrollable pane at the top and a scrollable pane at the bottom would be doable. I just don't yeah. know how to make it easy to get to the side links. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gene, did you want to jump in? No, not particularly. In other words, I, we're, we're off on one of these. Yeah, that would be a separate app from the viewer. And, but yeah. I thought it'd be helpful to, to embed that in the viewer rather than the whole brain. But yeah, it's a bit off path. Yeah. Um, so in terms, go ahead. in terms of of an environment that multiple people can contribute to on the fly. In other words, the the problem with the brain is one user is not cheap, and five users is outrageous. All right. And I had a need for an environment that would allow multiple people to edit the environment simultaneously. And Rome gave me that. So right. with, with my subscription, <clears throat> I can create a Rome graph and give 100 people edit access to it for my subscription fee, and there's no addition to it. Huh. And they, don't, can, and they don't have to be paid up Rome members. They can just be. No, nope, they just have to have an. They have have to have a Rome account. An account, but they don't have to subscribe. Right. And you can set it up so that some people can view, 
or you, you can make the whole thing public if you want to. If you don't make it public, some people can view, some people can edit, and you can also implement what's called immutable blocks, which says you can't edit anybody's blocks but your own. Though, if I create a block and you want to essentially edit it, you can reference it, essentially create a copy of that block and edit it to create your version of that block. And you, you know, you can comment on blocks. So, which is a little um, bit what, what Fedewicki does. It, it gave me what I was looking for um, yes. without, because I, I had tried using the brain in the past at one time with a couple of users and we crashed it. We lost a ton of content. And, wow. And, um, and um, the people at the brain couldn't save it. I mean, they tried, but it was just, it was all messed up. Hmm. So, um, we keep we keep looking. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, we're near the top of an hour, and it's a reasonable time to wrap. I'm just wondering, um, has this conversation better illustrated what composting might look like? What thoughts are in your head about making it better or making it work? Um, is this a quixotic quest? Anything like that? I'm not sure that, that composting is real appropriate label for what you're talking about, at least. Uh, not, alternate names, extremely welcome. What might we call this? Is, is this well, post-processing? Is this knowledge weaving? Is this info looming? Uh, really, like I, I would love a better term for it. I'm going for composting just because I'm loving nature metaphors these days. And, and it feels like we're looking through the waste products and, and getting the nutri <laughs> nu nutrients from them and weaving them in. So better word? I, I, well, I don't have one at the moment. Oh, I no. Will, I, will, I will ponder that. You know? Okay, please. Please. We, uh, we distill and synthesize. And, yeah. So. And I'm trying to also have a friendlier goofy metaphor word instead of synthesize or something like that because this is a form of collective synthesis or collaborative intelligence no problem i think that we're on that path but i'm trying to avoid terminology that would stop people from just climbing in and trying to join in with the conversation okay. Bentley, any thoughts i don't yeah i don't know that we came to we solved your problem of when are we going to have the next composting call and what are we going to do during the call? Um, I was going to suggest maybe just go ahead and have people to go ahead and create their own weavings and post them in the Mattermost channel. Um, just so if anyone is inspired, they can take movement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, are you going to just, do you think you're going to just pick another time since? Pete seems to think Doodle's no longer. I think uh, his suggestion was just pick a couple, sort of uh, suggest a couple times, and then if somebody uh, important sort of pops up and says that doesn't work, then move them around a little bit. But basically, just start with some some suggested times. And I'm I'm comfortable, you know, putting some times out and then being flex about how we use the times with depending on who shows up and what they're interested in. And and back to the. Uh... The rural community sustainable model. Not only did we have meetings, Zoom meetings, for half a dozen people, um, two or three of the people worked on the map between the meetings. And then during the next meeting, they would sort of explain to everybody what it was that they did uh, on their own. And we established a set of guidelines on how a person could go in and make changes to the map and leave a set of breadcrumbs that someone could follow um, so that we weren't actually destroying each other from one meeting to another, which would That's be great. very easy. Yeah, totally, totally. So you created some, some small community standards for collaborative work on a complicated document. That's good, that's very needed. Cool. 
So invite me to the next meeting, whenever that is. We'll do. And then we're, we're bumping up on Christmas. I think the week between Christmas and New Year's might be good uh, for some of this because some people are off their normal duties and, and you know, relaxing, but some people might want to participate. So I think I might, I might try something Monday, Tuesday, next week. I might actually skip to the following week. I'll be, I'll be here. I'll be okay. around. Cool. I'll be in the Bye. Zooms too. Um, good to see you, you again, Bentley. Yeah, good to see you guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your, your co-thinking on this, your co-composting. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Joe. Bye for now. See you later.